One, two, three. Yeah, so this is technically the fifth point. Round five from Michigan State versus Kent State. Michigan State nursing a 2-1 lead with 13.30 left in this second half. the opening rush. Looks like we have no kills off the opening rush. I think that was the first point Kent did not lose anyone off the opening rush. And see, you don't think that's that important, but I don't know. I would not be sitting my best players up on the rush and leaving them vulnerable like that in such close quarters. That's why my team always had me do the rush. <laughs> ah, yes. I was not participating in the rush. Mainly because I was not fast. And the early ball's over? Wow, really? That's big. That is surprising. To see it that early in the, in the point. Well, here's the thing. If you know they can catch, you necessarily want to throw at them. That's all they're considering. Yep. So we'll see if Kent State can take advantage of this opportunity they've been given. Cassidy making the rounds right now, pumping up the golden flashes. Let's see if his team can respond here in desperate need of a point. I think it's safe to say if Kent State does not win this point, the game is probably over. Yep. This is a nice point for Kent. Thankfully, they have 12 minutes with which to work. Yes, they do. That's a lot of their throws go. Great, great shot there. But quickly out on a uh, attempted catch. See at all what's going on in the Sag Valley JMU game while you're walking around? Very curious to see what's happening in that game. All right, Bomas is going to check on the Sag Valley JMU game for us, which you can also watch being live streamed right now. Visit the NCDA Facebook page or the Twitter account. All the links are being shared there throughout the day. Although I believe. For that Saginaw Valley JMU game, you'll want to check out the Facebook page because we had to update the link. Oh, and a nice unaware shot there takes out number eight for Michigan State. Who was it that threw that? Did you see that, Ryan? Number 11, Evan Lutz. Number 11 getting the kill there for Kent State. Kent State with a plus two man advantage. They only have, what, two out right now? Three now. Three, yep. Kind of settling into this volley, volley, volley routine where teams will just throw to reset the shot clock, back up, and then there'll be a surge of action where... Well, there's going to come to a point here where Kent realizes there's not a lot of time left. Yeah. And they're going to need to get a point in. All 
right, I gotta, I gotta confess, right? I'm gonna steal, I'm gonna steal uh, Cassidy away from Kent State. I'm gonna make him go to grad school at WKU. He is actually looking to go to grad school somewhere. Well, by God, I'm gonna put in the pitch for WKU. Let him come down and pump up our team like that. There's been a lot of points where Cassie has gotten the catch and gotten the whole team pumped up. That's all you need sometimes, just that one spark to turn the whole point around. Feels like Kent's kind of controlling this point, but the question is, can they finish it out? Yeah, they're going to need to make some catches. Throwing is just not doing it enough now, especially with Michigan State having the ball advantage. Yep. Which is somehow funny, considering that Kent State had the balls over. Was it this, at this point, right? Yep. Beginning at this point, they had the balls over. So, oh, how the pendulum has swung back now in Michigan State's favor. Massimino goes down there on an attempted catch, or I should say a block with his hands. What's going on, Bomas? Well, I just took a look at the James Madison Saginaw Valley State game, and it is what you would expect of James Madison Saginaw Valley State game. They are tied one to one, three players left on each side, about eight minutes to play, and everyone's held around the refs who are pouring through the world. Yes, no surprise there from either of those teams. Ryan, will you give us a man count so we can see what we got going right now? Oh, wow. Devastating headshot. Flicks his shoe in the air in disgust. 12 to 7. 12 to 7. 12 to 7 for Kent State right now. That's doable. Yes, it is. You got seven minutes left to finish out this half. Let's see if Kent can take a point with the man advantage they have. Just like in the first half. Kent State controlling this second point, it feels like. Yeah, he's on the sidelines right now. Kent State's really got to be careful here not, not to let these next few minutes slip away. And then be rushing the last three minutes. If that happens, the price will be fighting uh, Michigan State to turn off and make sure there's any defense there and walk away with two one victory. Or just inviting a lot of catches from Michigan State if you're making desperate throws. Another Michigan State player goes out. So an 11 to 6. Crucial right there. Gets him down to a 10 second shot clock. Kent State's got a real good chance now. They have to stay aggressive. this half. Kent oh so close to closing this out and taking a point to make it 2-2, but they have got to get to work. That will help significantly. 31 goes down for Michigan State there. Who had that kill, Ryan? Bert DePero. DePero, number seven with the kill. Captain. The captain leading the, leading the charge. He's had a lot of... I think he's had the past three outs. Has he now? So stepping up when his team needs him. I'm not sure if Kent realizes that the time is slowly dwindling away. Yep. Here. They the sure. To the scoreboard. 
Michigan State now down to three players left. We have four minutes left in this half. Rotate around here to give you all a better look. Bomas, come a little closer. Whistles. Turn on the game clock. <laughs> now down to 340 left. Three Michigan State players left in. Can they survive and stave off? This is the point where you start to question whether you want to try to catch and seal the win or just sit back and hope you don't drop it. I think you gotta get aggressive here with the man advantage you got. You gotta oh, no, go for no, catches. I mean for, uh, for Michigan State. Oh yeah. I think you're in full blown survival mode right now. You try to hold on. And now with the under three. Yep. Three minutes left. Kent has got to get busy. I believe that was Kent State call the timeout, yeah. I think they both went for it, but Kent State got there first. With, uh, looks like, 2.44 left. And Michigan State will help Dodge Bowls to kill about a minute on that clock. What do they have right now? I think they have six or seven at this point. So either six or seven ball advantage for Michigan State. This is always a situation I have trouble deciding what to do here. And by, what, by that, I mean this. If you're Kent State, obviously you need to get rid of the three players. The question is, do you stay all the way to uh, the back of your zone of the court and force them to run back and forth, back and forth, every 10 seconds? Or do you advance your men all the way up to that, uh, the end of that neutral zone line and force them to throw a catchable ball? Remember, if the ball ends up short of that neutral zone line, it does not reset the shot clock. So they have to throw in and make sure it will count. I think you go with option two. You have a few men you can burn here. You've got to try to go for the catch if you're Kent State. I think you play aggressive. You've got some guys that you can afford to waste here. 244 left on the clock. Spartans up by one. Kent State has a plan in set. I was unable to hear what they're going to do. But they heard something that they were going to do it three times. So they are watching the clock. Resetting the shot clock there. 2.30 left now. The ball advantage just killing Kent State right now. They have what looks like three balls to seven. Two minutes left in this game. Two minutes. Michigan State simply going to throw where the players aren't to reset the shot clock. Throw it close out there. Looks like a catchable ball. Yep. Step it and dive. Is that still the roll bonus? Yes. Second ball. 90 seconds left in this game. Have enough dodgeballs to kill about 50 seconds. So the catch down goes one. Two players left. And another catch down to one. 110 left in this game. Can they? That will be a team catch or a no catch. One minute, one minute left for Kent State to... Oh, no. Stepped over the line. Had a chance there at that catch, but just misses it. Oh, 
A nice shot there, takes that number 15. 40. short of the neutral zone line does not reset the shot clock so there will be a balls over shot clock violation if you want to avoid that you're the man down instead of throwing their feet throw about a foot to a foot and a half over there not too high to where it looks like you're it's impossible to catch but just high enough to where it would be a really tough catch I agree so exactly 30 seconds left if you dodge this volley, you probably take some of the big ones. Yes, but you do the old left behind, just like they did in the first half where they kept that one ball back and got the remaining Michigan State player in. Will they keep the same strategy? My money says yes. No bet. No bet. There we go, 30 seconds on the clock. And they get him. Oh, we got a timeout prior. Oh, wow. And a timeout right before the volley. He's gonna burn them both. All the dodgeballs go back to Penn State. Yep, all the balls since that was before the throws. 21 and a half seconds left. So plenty of time here. I think you throw about half your balls. When he hits the ground on his dodge, you throw the rest of them. Throwing up as much as possible. Not so much because I'm a coward, but because to minimize my service area, I'm not the chance that any of these are going to hit you. Yeah, you try to make yourself as small as possible, but it's really difficult it's here. Timeout. Yeah. And another timeout. Colin O'Brien burning both of his team's timeouts here. I will note that the official did not start the game. Before. Did he not now? Probably burned about, I would say, Three, four seconds there. Yeah, we'll let it run to 22. 22.6 seconds left. So basically, we've burned about eight seconds off. Which you've got, you've got the timeouts to use them. You might as well give yourself the best possible chance. But we'll see if it makes any difference. Right, this is the one that counts. State gets the point. I can break chairs right now. <laughs> Ryan fired up. Tell us about getting that point right there. Kent State fired up yeah. right now. No one expected this. Barn an absolute miracle. We yes, we are headed to overtime. overtime. We're going to get our first overtime of that. Brian, fired up right now. Kent State alumni, throw a jersey on him and let him go. We will be back with the final 16 seconds that will most likely go to overtime. We just came from saying to Jamie, it was an amazing game. Uh, Jamie won two. They just calling it and going, they're calling it and going straight. All right, so they're going straight to overtime. We'll be back with the overtime point here in just a minute.